And we're recording. Okay. <laughs> um, well, hello. Uh, I am, this is Scott. I'm chairing the, or not chairing, uh, guiding the charts meeting. Um, we are actually making the agenda as we speak. I think talking about the Helm Hub makes sense, given where we're at and that we didn't have anything else on the list. I would love if Paul was here because um, uh, well, Reinhard and Adnan and I talk, did talk a bit about some of the different components for how we could help people um, with their automation on GitHub. Um, that might be a good topic too, is the charts releaser. If you two want to talk about that too, next. Yeah, I mean, that'd be good. Okay. Do you have any other topics that are important that we want to get on the agenda before we forget? Sounding like no. Okay. Helm Hub. All right, I'll, I'll dive into this. So yeah. I took an action last time we were here to start documenting what we'd want somebody to do. Uh, quite frankly, we, um, the CNCF has offered some money or funding to try and get contractors to go work on things. So I've started a document here just to try to outline some of the things that we need to do uh, and when we need to do them, right? And so there's this doc, uh, go ahead and look at it. Um, it gives a little context. The whole idea is I wanted somebody from the outside to read it and we can start adding detail to it. I want to hand it over. So I'm looking at things like how do you scale the user experience, uh, which really has to do specifically with uh, scaling. Uh, how do I say? Oh, how does the structure of this dot go? That I can screw. Uh, so there's scaling of the new uh, homepage. There's scaling of the user experience around how do you list um, repositories on the charts page, right? We need a UI model for that that's different. Just listing all of them out in the order they're listed in the config file, not a great idea, right? Because think about when we got 200 of these here. That's going to be a pretty darn long list. It's probably not a good way to do it. So we need to come up with a new user experience widget and how we do this. Um, and then there is scaling the, the web application. So the homepage currently lists every chart. We're over 500. What happens when we're over like 2,000 or 3,000? We have to send all of those all the way down and then display them in a client-side web app. That doesn't scale. Uh, so it talks about that. Then it talks about a new homepage design. If you're not going to do that, we do need a new homepage design. Uh, then on this chart search filtering page, we need to do things like um, we can't list everything out of the box. Uh, Search really needs to happen server side rather than client side, just so you only send down the bits you need. Uh, and then we need to introduce pagination probably uh, because your search results could be way too many. We're gonna eventually need to get into pagination. Um, the thing that I have not gotten onto in this doc is search integration with the Helm client. We should probably have a public API that's okay for Helm to query to do the same kind of results. And maybe it's the same API we use for search filtering, that's fine. Uh, a lot of this has to do with intent um, and being explicit in here. Other things that uh, with possible future updates that I don't know that I wanna put into this, but we'll need to think about. One, moving off of Mongo, uh, we should not be using the non-open source version of Mongo anymore. So Mongo changed its license. Uh, part way through, um, I did check on guidance. We should only be using the version that's still 8GPL. The newer version under the newer license we should not use. And so we will eventually need to move away from that. Um, doing that as part of this, I'm not sure if it matters uh, or if we do it as a separate thing. Um, I would probably put it under the possible future updates, but it is one of those things. I checked with the CNCF. They kind of said, yeah, switch off of Mongo. Um, you know. Hmm. What what about if we were able to use something like Cosmos DB? Then they don't care. On Azure. Then they don't care. That might be easier then to go down that route. It might be, but we also ship um, Monocular for people to run themselves. And mm. we don't want to tell them to use a proprietary database. True. So. Is there going to be like a fork of MongoDB that fixes these licensing issues? They'd have to fork off the old version, not the, the latest update. And then from there, I don't know. Hmm. Okay. 
I, I have no idea what's going to happen around Mongo. Um, Mongo as an organization has been incredibly aggressive in controlling their stuff. Um, and so they, I, I'm not sure what will happen around that. Mm hmm yeah for whatever for what it's worth we've heard from a few people uh for cube apps that um this isn't related to the license in mongodb but mostly people don't really want to operate mongodb um and it comes with its own fair share of issues so we have kind of done some brief investigation into possible alternatives one of those is postgres with its um document kind of format that it supports yeah. Um, so that's one option there. I was actually going to suggest Postgres um, because, uh, again, there's a document format one, and then every major cloud operates it as a service. Mm. Yeah. So it's easy to get as a SaaS without all the legal issues around it. So that was, mm -hmm. but we should look into and investigate that. Uh, then the other possible update, and I would punt on this one for a while, is a repository in your namespace listing. So we have a page that, you know, you go to Stable or you go to Bitnami or go to whoever's page and for the namespace or repository listing, and you can see all of the charts that they have very easily. And it's an easily linkable page, right? So somebody could just link to that page and point people to it, um, or rather than it just being a query listing. Of course, this also has to do with the way searching would be redone and refined, that kind of thing. Um, just to be clear, if I'm, you're talking primarily about, with the exception of the pagination side, when we're on the charts, on, when we're on the charts. Um, what time is it? <laughs> We're being recorded right now, by the way. Oh, hi. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> um, what time is the place been? Give me just a second. Yeah. Thanks. Um, thank you. Um, love that kid. Uh, anyway, what I was saying was, um, if I'm understanding correctly, um, when we're on the charts, one of the charts pages and, sorry, the Helm Hub pages, and we click on one of the repositories on the left, it does it does list them and it does give a, a URL for it. But if I'm understanding you right, Matt, it's not so much the UI experience there as it is the, um, the way that it's all being loaded into the front end. So right now, uh, everything, every chart, when you load up the site is sent to the UI, right? Right. And that doesn't scale. Right. And we need to have a way to say, here's a thing. But uh, this is also going to change with OCI repositories, right? So we plan on being able to push and pull Helm charts from OCI compliant repositories, like mm -hmm. hopefully eventually Docker Hub. So mm -hmm. how do our namespace listings work there? <laughs> right? It's what if somebody has the same namespace, say, in Quay and in, say, I don't know, Docker Hub? What do the URLs look like? How does this work? And how do we have a nice landing page that isn't just a list of charts, maybe has the organization's logo and other things on it? It's not just a search results, it's something like that. You know, my, my initial thought when you said that was we just include the, the host in, as part of the namespacing. Um, but there's a whole experience, right? Like, what is the description of who this this repository is or this org? What is right. it? What are the details on that? Yeah, I, right. I, this is a user experience thing, and yeah, so that's why I'm thinking more long term. What is not the technicality of how do you implement it, but what does the user experience look like if somebody goes to one of these pages and is experiences it? And I, I just realized this is out there, so I put it in possible future updates, because I realize that this is something that will be asked for only because I've worked in these kinds of marketplaces before and you inevitably land here, right? And if you go to something like Docker Hub or Quay today, when you go to that, that thing, you do have more of that contextual information. People want it. And so they're gonna ask for it here. So that's why I just put it out there kind of as a future leading thing to say, yeah, this is, we should think about this coming, but not do it right now. Yeah, makes sense. Um, that kind of thing. So this is kind of where I was putting with things because again, a lot of this is designed on bringing UI contractor in to do this stuff, right? To yeah. help us you with it. You want to develop personas, you want to think about use cases, yeah. 
Yeah, but we're we're very very busy, and so I want to give general guidance and direction on it, and then go talk with what do they need on the, uh, what do they need on the CNCF side to get the ball rolling, so we can get this moving because we've been too busy to do enough of the work quickly enough. I mean, we're all just we've got our day jobs, we've got other things going on, and so we also don't have the time to do that detailed product project management right now, right? So let's provide somebody with what they need and what the CNCF needs to get the ball rolling rather than get too complicated on it. Quick question. Uh, it, are the needs that you're describing that I think no one's disagreeing with diverging from the needs that Monocular is trying to solve? Adnan, you want to jump in on that one? Um, so yeah, I didn't fully understand your question, Scott. I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, on, on one hand, the the goal of using monocular is, hey, uh, this is, I mean, it can be updated, and as we need changes, we can, you know, make them. But in terms of um, the the scale of this, is is monocular, is that within the scope of monocular to where we where we would want those changes to be made upstream in monocular, or should it be? I think so. Yeah. I mean, I think when we when we discussed this before, the idea was that Monocular would move towards supporting the the hub in whatever capacity that means. Got it. Okay. Um, yeah. And and I and I also think some of these issues that we are able to fix will be useful for people deploying Monocular uh, inside their own organizations, right? If they're using it as a kind of index to all of their different repositories, I think all of these all of this stuff. It's still a problem, right? It might be a smaller problem because they might have less charts, but um, I think it's still still useful changes. Yeah, especially in like a large organization, right? I've worked for a couple of large organizations and we've run our own container repositories and you get a massive number of containers in there and you've mm -hmm. got delineations between departments and groups and things like that, right? So how does this, how is this all going to work? Now, maybe some of this for companies will go away because they're going to be uh, hopefully able to use OCI repositories in the future. So if they're running Docker trusted repository or Quay on prem or the CNCF project Harbor, I should put that one first. Uh, if they're using that, it should just be a native part of their experience there in a couple of years. Um, so I don't know what kind of experience they'll be required to have in monocular then either. That makes sense. Yeah, great. Okay. I was just checking, you know. Um. Yeah, no, it's a good question. Um, yeah, I kind of see it similar to npmjs, where there's the npmjs that you go and you find your node packages, um, but then you can also go and run that same thing inside your own organization if you have your private npm repository, right? Yeah. Okay, so this is where I'm going. Uh, Adnan, I'll probably want a lot of review from you from this, uh, just to review it going forward. I'll try to scope it down a little bit about what we're gonna do in the future, maybe break that off, maybe not. Um, before I send it over to, uh, before I send it, okay, so because we're gonna be asking for money on this, uh, per our governance, we need to send this to the org maintainers. Uh, my hope is by uh, the end of the day today, now we give us, at the end of the day, Friday would be uh, able to send it. If we do lazy consensus, then we'd be able to send it over to the CNCF end of the day, Friday. That's kind Sounds of what good. I'm hoping for. Uh, if not, maybe we send it over Monday, whatever. Um, but I'm trying to get it going just so we can have a lazy consensus period with the org maintainers on this so everyone can review it. And then we can um, just get the ball rolling on this. Are you moving it from HackMD to the community repo or? I don't know. I'll probably run it by the uh, CNCF first to see what the appropriate okay. place is to do that afterwards. Uh, because once we've kind of approved it at a certain state and time, we can move it to another place. I think we should do some of this stuff in those places, but I also don't know how the other projects have handled it or since this is a um, contracting situation with the CNCF, what that means. Um, okay. I don't know I mean, yet. It'll be useful to have the proposal be publicly linked from community. Yeah. Um, oh. Yeah. Uh, 
and, and we'll probably get into that sometime next week. This would have to be a formal request through the service desk probably, um, but I'm gonna ask about the I dotting and T crossing on this stuff. Okay, sounds good. Because I, I, this is our first time doing it, right? Yeah. Uh, as far as contractors go, I know there's been questions. It's just a normal contracting setup between somebody and the CNCF. Um, folks have asked about what it would be like to, you know, do that for their day jobs and things like that. Uh, it's a normal contracting setup with the CNCF when they go out and do it. So if somebody wants to do that, they probably need to reach out to the CNCF on it. Um, because anybody can be a contractor. This is just their normal. We contract this stuff out. Let me see if I can grab the email. Because we did ask about that for folks. It is. Okay. I talked to Chris too much. I talked to Chris too much. That's what I learned. <laughs> ah, here we go. <laughs> um, Chris's response was We contract work out like any other company out there. We have a standard agreement template that we work with folks on. And so if somebody's interested in this, I'm happy to point them to Chris and let the CNCF deal with this. And then it depends on whether the standard terms can be worked and all of those things. So once we get the ball rolling, if somebody's interested in that for their companies, um, uh, I'm happy to go as the go between to hand off those names to make those connections because I'm already talking to them on this stuff then. So that's all I've got on the Helm Hub. Um, anything else we should add or change about this as I'm writing it up? Nothing comes to mind immediately, but I'll, I'll have a read through this and see if I have any comments on it. Great. That's it for this part. Uh, we can go on to the next thing. OK. Um, I think the next. The next item, actually, before we do move on, uh, Matt, just for a separate issue, would you mind sending me the CNCF service desk URL again? I tried to get into it, and it had some weird Atlassian login snafu. So I think maybe I have the wrong link. No, no, that's it. You should have gotten an email inviting you to join that. Yeah, I did. Actually, I did. Um, I'm not sure what happened here. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll follow up on yeah, that. You follow it. Okay, follow up with me offline on it. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if maybe that got zapped or something. Um, okay. Because um, I was accessing it before. Uh, okay. The next agenda item is the chart releaser. So um, do I wonder if Ryan or Adnan, if either of you want to kick that off or talk about it or if you want me to. Right. <laughs> okay, I think I think that's going to be me. Um, yeah. So so there is. Um, I think um, I can't actually remember which of you. Maybe it was Reinhard suggested. Hey, have you ha taken a look at Paul Zars' uh, chart release or, or what he was calling um, Helm Hub repo? Chart Hub, I think. Chart Hub, right? Chart Hub, yeah. And uh, and yes, I, I had um, and talked with him quite a bit because he. He had been on one of the calls uh, last year that when Adnan and you and I were talking a lot about that um, and putting together the, the plan for it. And, um, and I was doing some experimenting with, with uh, Git, um, GitHub apps and made a, um, an example of Go example, you know, kind of to, to have parity with what, um, you know, GitHub shows for their Ruby app or whatever. And that was, I did that and it was, it worked fine. Um, and the goal of that, by the way, was to um, just to remind everyone, although you all probably remember, <laughs> I'm doing it for the sake of posterity, I guess, for the recording, is that um, the, um, the goal was to have a service that would be, um, that we could run that would allow, make it easier for people to run um, Helm repos directly from a GitHub repo. As long as they have charts in them, we could have a config file that says, here they are, and what do you want to do with them? And then we would automatically they would subscribe to a service and make a chart, uh, um, a Helm repo from it. Um, and the goal of using a GitHub app at that time, and I think this, we still want to do that, um, was to allow users to reduce the scope um, 
of permissions so that right now if you use NoAuth app, um, you, uh, with, with GitHub anyway, your, your scope applies to every organization you're part of, which is pretty bad. Um, we could say, well, just trust us, but that also uh, uh, increases our liability, especially for running this as a Helm org. So, um, so hence the GitHub app. Anyway, uh, the guts of it though um, were just pretty much what we had script, pretty much what already was in place that some of you on this call worked on uh, to, um, to, to automatically set up, I believe it was for Monocular, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, a Helm repo for Monocular. Um, in any case, um, one other project that we had that already had this scripted up, we said, well, let's do this and go. And I think Paul was on the call and he wanted to give his, try his hand at it. Um, and went ahead and did that under the name of uh, Chart Hub. And we had talked about that not being a good name um, and potentially merging efforts. And many months later, you know, Reinhard brought it up um, uh, to me and Adnan because we had been talking about it as part of a plan. Uh, we said, that sounds great. We, uh, the problem was Chart Hub's um, TLDR, its approach did not seem to be compatible initially uh, with um, a, re a, a Git repo that had multiple charts in it um, because they tie, it tied releases to chart releases to Git releases, Git tag releases, which I love the idea of, but didn't see a way to do it with multiple charts. Through that conversation, I think Adnan and Reinhard thought of a good way, like, hey, maybe we could just use naming. And uh, we had a brainstorm and came up with a good idea to do it. Reinhard put in a, a, uh, a PR. It's already merged into Chart Hub. I talked with Paul. He agreed this sounded great. We moved, we moved Chart Hub, renamed it to um, Charts Releaser, or Chart Releaser, which was the proposal that Adnan and I wrote up. Um, and we moved it to the Helm repo, or the Helm GitHub org. That, I think that kind of like spans where we're at with it. Um, the thing I think that we need to do now is potentially test it and then just write the GitHub app wrapper for it and then ask for money to host it. Does yeah, so it is, yeah, no, no, thanks for the summary. So, so I remember, I think, Reinhard, you, you brought up a good point because I think we were looking at, uh, there was a tweet about GitHub Actions and there was potential question about whether we could use GitHub Actions there. And um, the issue with that is you can't actually run uh, Docker inside of, or, or like, I think GitHub Actions is built on top of Docker itself, but then you can't run Docker containers inside of those actions. Yeah, at, at, least, at least not not yet. But you you don't have access to the Docker daemon, uh, and yeah, as I, I I emailed with Chess for Sale about this, who is no longer at GitHub anymore, <laughs> um, huh. and she, she told me it's not possible what I want to do now. Um, they have plans for this, but it's just not there yet, and it, I think it will still take a while. And, um, I think to me, GitHub Actions still feel kind of really, really beta, if not alpha, and it's yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's just not ready yet. Yeah. Well, can you even use them on organizations yet, or are they only for personal repositories? You can if you're approved. And uh, <laughs> the funny thing is, it's, it's unclear how how you, how the approval actually works because I had been approved for a while now, but only on under certain orgs and not others and under myself. So it's like, I don't think it's viable for us because pe not everyone can use it, even if those issues were resolved. So maybe we can think about it for the future, but for now. Well, we iterate and we move, right? So GitHub app is probably the easiest yeah. way to go because everybody can do it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, and we already have plenty of space to host it. Hosting is not a problem. Okay. I think we can, yeah, we can probably use the existing chart cluster that we have. Yeah, no, no yeah. issues there. Let, we, let's let yeah. get rolling on it. We've got space. We can do it. That's not an issue. There's also a question of if we want to avoid having any infrastructure at all or having infrastructure to do testing and stuff, what we can do is we can make this thing basically set up and keep up to date a circle CI configuration and then you would just hook, hook your repo up to Circle CI, and that would go and build up all your charts. Um, oh, right. That was the other. 
Yeah, that was the other conversation because Reinhardt already, you made an example in your repo of how that would work in a circle job. Yeah. So uh, it's like, do you just have a, a service that just says, okay, cool, I'm gonna write a circle file for you and keep that updated? Yeah. That would be a kind of simple way to do it. It's obviously not as nice and we can't extend it as much, but it's, yeah. We should look into the different options and see what has what kind of user experience because a lot of what we're, we're beating around the bush here is is there's different user experiences and different people may want different things. I like the idea of having like a circle CI example, but for a whole bunch of other people like GitHub app might be a good way to go. There's no one right answer and we should probably list out the different options. Yeah, we have talked about some of them just as a reminder. Uh, sorry, Reinhold, go, go ahead. I mean, you would probably need both the GitHub app and Circle or something like this, I guess. So, in in the case of yeah, if we were talking about having a GitHub app that just writes the Circle config for you, then yeah, that would you would require both. So one of the other pro yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, um, I, I guess you could do everything with the app. Yeah. So yeah, if you host it on your own and you have infrastructure. Yeah. And I think the idea is that what, that the Helm org would run the GitHub app for people. They would be able to just say, cool, plug and play. And then we would say, great. And we would make it generally available. Um, and at that point, our work would be um, you know, about just mainta maintaining it and scaling it. Yep. Yeah, the idea would be to implement something like our own circle CI, but dedicated for building, for packaging and possibly running tests on charts. Mm -hmm. um, and then we could even have a dashboard, you know, you go to, I don't know, chartsreleaser.helm.sh or whatever, and then you can see, you log in with your GitHub and then you, you can see all your builds or whatever and manage your repository and stuff from there. It could be a nice idea. One, yeah, one of the posts that we mentioned that I just wanna just make more transparent because it was kind of a, a off chat, you know, uh, side chat is, um, is that there may be options that people want. We may actually need them to give some sort of configurations, but GitHub apps in themselves don't have them. So what we would, you know, the initial thought that I had was, well, how about a, you know, a named file kind of like every other CI system in the world at this point, <laughs> pretty much <laughs> GitOps CI system in the world has like a circle config file or a or a chart release or config file, and then you know they would be able to list their config options as we make more options available to them. That would be one other pro in the pros and cons list for using our own service rather than Circle, because otherwise they would have to have a config file in order to ask us to make a certain a different type of Circle file, and that just sounds very confusing. True, yeah. And if we if we ended up just creating a Circle configuration, it's it's not really solving the use case of it's too hard to run a repository. How do I go and do this? Right. We want to make that really, really easy. And if we're just creating a circle CI file that people can just copy and paste from somewhere anyway, and then set up with circle CI, it's not really solving that problem. Yeah. Um, whereas if we can actually make the user experience really nice and make it so that the user barely has to even worry about, I mean, how much configuration is there really anyway, um, to configuring a repository, right? As long as you have a repository with charts in some directory, um, you know, I, I think it's I think it's fairly straightforward. It could just be the, cl the click of a button, just enable this thing and start building my charts. Um, obviously, if you want to do more advanced configuration, then then maybe we could make that possible. But um, but yeah, to start off with, I think just like a really simple UX of just clicking a button and then having I've re I've <clears throat> I guess pushing up your charts to uh, GitHub releases is what we've. Is what we're going with, right? With Paul's, uh, Paul's work. Yeah. I think so. I mean, there, there doesn't seem to be any reason not to, you know, yeah, not to use that and work with it. Um, given that we, we just, we kind of, at, through that conversation with him, already decided to move that into the Helm GitHub work. Um, we can kind of do, we can all collectively do what we need with it. He's completely happy with that. He doesn't have any uh, feeling of ownership uh, or directorship of that in any way. He was just trying to be helpful. It was great. Cool. Yeah, it's it's pretty easy to work with a releasing release GitHub release API as well. So, yeah. 
Sorry. No, I, I was just going to make a quick comment that if something is brought into our stuff, we have to be careful on it and make sure that everything has the proper sign off and all of the legal things dotted, you know, I's dotted and T's crossed across anybody who's contributed to it, just to make sure that we follow all the legalese on the stuff. So if a few people contributed to it, they all their commits need to be signed off and all that junk now. So just a thought when we go do some of this. Uh, yes. Uh, how do... Does that mean we have to go back and get, have all the commit signed? I don't know the right answer to it, or if there's another way it can be legally transferred in and not have it signed. Um, I can go ask. I'll ask. I'll make the, I'll make the, um, the code of conduct file. Uh, I'm almost surprised at myself I didn't do that since I added it to all the other, repo, all the other repos. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. That's an obvious one. The signed thing you know what, this isn't widely available or used anywhere. We could, you know, kind of do that. We could go back you and go force push and, and go over at the commits. That's fine. As long as we dot all the I's and cross all the T's on these things, we need to make sure everything's handled properly. I'll make an issue in that repo right now. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's 12 commits. Um, I think it's fine. Let's just go back and sign those off. I think it's That's what I would do. Agreed. Okay. Uh, we don't have anything else, or are there any other thoughts about discussion topics or thoughts about this one topic? Oh, I see another topic now. Are we done with the charts releaser conversation for now? Is that a good wrap up or is there anything else that we want to cover? Sounding like done. Okay, so... I added the other one. Okay. Uh, uh, Reinhard dropped the thing in about Mongo and how some folks have dropped it from their repositories, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, really, this is a broader question for us. Uh, other places like Debian, they're like, nope, we're not doing the install of proprietary things. And now it's a proprietary thing. So it's obviously out because they have criteria around that kind of thing, right? Uh, they're open source projects. The things they maintain are open source projects. You get the point. Uh, for us, the question is a bit tangential to that. Um, how do we handle proprietary things in our repository? Because we don't even have a policy around that. For them, it's just, it's no, it's proprietary now. It's not open source. It's out. For us, we have never discussed a policy on this and how we should do things. And so I thought we should raise the question because we can't say kick it out or do something else unless we have clear guidelines on this stuff. Uh, I, I don't think we've required charts to necessarily have an open source license in the past. For example, we have, um, I think it's Artifactory, which is the, well, it's, it's yeah, we do. now, but it used to be, we used to have the pro version of Artifactory inside the stable repo. And there might be a few other things as well. Um, yeah, I don't know that we had a, policy to only allow open source stuff. Artifactory is open source, I think, but I don't know what, what license. Um... What is, there's Artifactory open source and then there's the pro version of Artifactory. And if I remember yeah. correctly, the stable yeah. chart would deploy yeah. the pro version by default unless you explicitly wanted the OSS one. That said, it's moved to the JFrog repo now, so. Yeah, which is in Helm Hub. So do we apply the yeah. rules for the hub? <laughs> That's a good point. I'll uh, we should have proprietary things in the hub, quite frankly. Um, but that's just my two cents. Uh, we're going to limit the usefulness of the hub if we only go towards open source. Yeah, I agree. You know, I seem to remember asking this really early on. Um, and I thought the answer was, um, no, no, no problems. I mean, you, uh, you can deploy charts that can connect to proprietary services, um, just like Cloud providers are proprietary services. You know, we have a number of those. Um, the code itself is open source. Uh, the services that it connects to may not be, but that's that was what I was told. I don't know that there was anything officially decreed or. If if we did say they're allowed just explicitly, do we need to make sure? How do we handle uh, license agreements and agreements of those things? Do we want to have a policy as long as it's in uh, our charts repository that you opt into it, or do we not care? Hmm. 
you know, it, it, here's just a like off the cuff thought, hemorrhaging an idea here. Um, what if, what if, what if the, uh, what is the, the issue? Is that that, is it that this is in fact, this is in general an open source project and people may be confused that when they're installing a chart that it requires a license key and that that might kind of tarnish our open source kind of reputation or image or is, is it, is it purely operating on the principle of least astonishment or is it really that we are under some sort of license umbrella overall under CNCF? You know what I mean? Well, for, so it depends on who you ask. So a lot of the organizations that handle these packages elsewhere, it's kind of their political statements, their ethos that right. the soul of the organization says and does things in a certain way. Like we're only shipping and doing um, open source things through us. If you want to go elsewhere, sure, you can do it, right? I can get a Debian package for proprietary software and get it fine. They are just not the distributors of that. Got it. Now in the Helm Hub, we are not the distributors. We are more of a discovery mechanism almost like, um, and, and so that would be like saying out of the box, right? So if I have Ubuntu, they give you a whole bunch of repositories out of the box for things and you can go search and find it and install things, but you can install any other ones you want, right? You can add them and then you get all of the things that they have. They also don't make the ability to discover out of the box there. And so for us, we make the ability to discover things out of the box from a wide variety of sources easier, right? We don't put a barrier, like they're saying only the open source bits that we control, we're giving you even the ability to see out of the box. And we're saying, no, we'll let you do everything, right? We don't, we're not putting a line on that. And so it's kind of an ethos question, I think. Uh, I'm not of sure of any legal thing that would cause this. Uh, as from my conversations with the CNCF, I would say that they are okay with proprietary things being listed. I don't think they have a problem with it. Okay, so um, but now that we have the hub, why don't we just say, okay, we only keep really open source stuff in the community repo and anything else should go to the hub and host themselves? Would that be a way to go? I guess that's the question, right? I mean, we're gonna tell everybody to go to the hub eventually. Right. Um, I, I would actually say we finished writing up the docs. And by the way, the GitHub docs, just get to today's GitHub docs without any other apps and things. I've actually already started writing. Um, I haven't posted them yet, but I've started writing it. I think it w we'd want to wait till we've got a couple of things like that on how to run a repository. And then we can start saying people get off proprietary folks. But until then, do we want to make that change? Do we care enough to go chase this down and talk to everyone on it? That might be the other thing is just practicality. If we're we're looking at the the community charts repo, the monolithic the monolith repo as kind of a long tail of migration at this point. Um, I guess the question would be, would this add a lot of extra work for us? Um, to, or would it help us? Would it help us actually get certain things off and into some of the, you know? Um, as far as the ethos question, I think. This has been an operation thus far, kind of without that problem. Like, I think it's been like that mostly all along. So we might, we still have, we still can decide to not include new things that don't fit certain criteria. And maybe that might actually be useful for us to, to narrow down what we, what new things we include, you know, given that we're trying to migrate off. Uh, I remember I, I was asking before in a, in a past meeting, you know, would we want to just kind of make a date where we say we're not adding any new things, you know, and it's since it's, you know, especially once we actually get the service up that allows people to automatically list their Helm, um, sorry, create a Helm repo from a GitHub repo, then at that point there's no real, there's no real advantage to adding new things. Um, but I guess my question is, is this question helpful in that regard? Because I'm not so sure that ethos. I, we don't. We haven't. We don't have it defined. So I don't know that now is the time to define it in that repo we're trying to deprecate. That's my two cents. 
so from a from a sheer practicality measure, do yeah. we have a lot of new charts coming in that are still being proposed in? I yes. see them in our yeah. Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, from a practicality measure, yeah, I I guess I don't care. <laughs> I don't personally have a preference on where we mark our line in the sand on this as we start to push people out. I would say before we start to push too many people out, we document how to run your own repository and we make that very clear. Then we start pushing people out because otherwise we're saying, hey, folks, you got proprietary thing, go run your own thing. But we've never made it clear here's ways you can do that. And here's what you need to do to do that. And I think that would be a poor experience to those folks. Yeah, I think that's key. We don't want to leave people necessarily hanging. Um, I think it's important that people know exactly what they need to do to go and run their own repo. Agreed. About the proprietary issue, I I don't know. I, I don't have a strong opinion on it. Um, my feeling would be to just to not remove MongoDB right now unless someone actually wants to go and take it and deprecate it, move it to a new repo. Um, but I don't think I don't think we wouldn't we wouldn't want to actively deprecate it if there's no one willing to do that. At the end of the day, it is a popular piece of software. I, we haven't previously had any restrictions on things being open source only. So I feel like to retroactively add that now would be a bit weird. Sounds great. So maybe if I sum it up, and tell me if anybody has a problem with this. Um, to retroactively add no proprietary would feel weird, right? Um, we want to get people off of our stuff, but first we need to document how they do that. And so we want to get this documented, then we want to tell everybody to move off, and uh, then it doesn't matter. And we don't want to retroactively add the no proprietary. Does this sound acceptable? Yes. Sounds good to me. I'm sketching that up right now in our notes. Fantastic. Thank you, Scott. Yeah. So that's, that's my two cents. Okay. Great. Um, okay, cool. I mean, feel free to edit what I sketched out. Um, uh, okay, so I guess uh, I think we're at the end, unless there are any other burning desires. Or just to, just to add on that, as far as that particular issue goes, I think um, it's not necessarily just about removing MongoDB, but also I think more importantly, letting users know that the new version of MongoDB licenses have changed. I'm not sure, I added the comment a couple of days ago, I'm not sure what, the best way to do that is I don't the um, author of the issue suggested adding a flag that needs to be set but I think that would just confuse people and and kind of just annoy people so I I don't again we don't really have a good way of um, notifying users of changes in the charts or um, or even things like licenses is even more obscure so I, need me. I mean, that's like right now, the, for instance, even with something like breaking changes and what you're supposed to do with them, um, the best thing that we could come up with so far, as opposed to building in a brand new notification system or something within Helm is to just add a, an, an obvious section of the readme. Maybe that is the solution. Yeah. And that's, that's what I mentioned there. Okay, um, okay. It, might be the, it might be pretty much the only, yeah. If you have any other thoughts on that, feel free to go. And another option is to add something in the notes. Um, but then the question is, when do you remove that? So it's, yeah, it's, it's difficult. Um, yeah, I, I would, I would suggest, uh, I agree with you. I think the readme is probably the best place for this. The problem is most people don't actually read it or depending on where you put it, if you put it at the bottom, you know, there's a lower chance of people actually finding it. 
but it also doesn't really belong at the top as a big warning notice, I think. Yeah. So yeah, I'm not sure. I will sketch a response. So that is Sounds it. great. Thanks, Scott. Okay, cool. Anything else? Not rushing. I'm just trying to be a moderator. <laughs> uh, okay. Sounds like sounds like now. Thanks everyone for coming. Thanks Matt for recording, and you know, thanks to me for moderating. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Have a good week. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye, Reinhardt. Bye, Bye guys. Bye.